I'm Darlene, and I'm here from Kindred again. And uh, today we're going to listen to and speak with uh, two members of the Lana family, and what that being Otto's family, otherwise known as Otto's Nation. Mm. If you watch the clip where Otto was um, communicating to all of us, and I have with us today his mom Shelley and his brother Zach. So I wanted to have you two share a little bit about being a family from a parent, and then of course from a sibling. Uh, point of view. So Shelly, sh share a little bit about your journey with Otto. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, well, we're a family of five, so we have three boys. And um, my older sons, Zach and Addison, they're a year apart. And then all of a sudden, 10 years later, on purpose, we had Otto. And um, so just being that Otto was so much younger, it made it different. Um, and then when he was diagnosed with autism when he was two and a half, it made things really different. Um, before, he was always the kid that was uh, toted to every, every single event. He was the kid that was three days old on the third baseline watching somebody play baseball or in on the pitch watching somebody play soccer that's that's what life as a third child is like but then when he was diagnosed we kind of became a family divided where all of a sudden he had 40 hours of therapy which mm -hmm. I was in charge of and then Claudio was in charge of sports and and those kinds of activities so I never got to participate in that stuff and neither did Otto because we were you know busy trying to cure him and um, and then they started taking vacations without us too because you don't want to miss a, miss a therapy session. And so that was hard because Otto missed out on a lot of really fun stuff because we were spending years seeking the answer. And while they were traveling the world surfing and golfing and doing amazing things, we were in San Diego, you know, all the way up to LA back and forth trying to, you know, find an expert that would help him you know, reach some type of functional life. So it was it was really hard before before we uh, figured out that communication was an, an option. Um, he was diagnosed when he was six with an intellectual disability, and um, that was through a an IEP process where they did his triennial tests at school without me present. And despite the fact that I asked them not to do an IQ test, let alone do any type of testing without me there and then I showed up to the IEP and they took him off a diploma track and put him on a certificate track so when he was in kindergarten and from then on he was had a functional based um, experience at school where there was no academics anymore there was nothing academic in any of his goals it was all functional um, how to wash your hands how to open a cheese stick um, no more were there things about how to get a high school diploma. So at that point, my other two boys were taking honor classes in high school and, you know, had the world by the tail, and Otto was the tail. You know, he just was the tail end of any stick. So um, it, was, it was disappointing. Mm -hmm. I could imagine. And then we discovered Darlene when he was nine. Um, as a fluke, we had exhausted every other aspect, and someone showed me a video of a young man typing his valedictorian speech for eighth grade and I I was astonished because I, I was like wait this kid's a version of Otto only a little early like how in the what's happening how is he typing and then um, someone showed me an article in Huffington Post about Darlene um, facilitating a young man being able to get his bar, do, do his bar mitzvah using um, the iPad and so I made an appointment up in Los Angeles and I thought well you know we'll throw a thousand dollars at anything so I thought okay I'll, I'll try this and he connected with Darlene on day one day one he um, started typing and it was his, his life changed his life changed so that's he had a he had a functional base of communication um, he was able to drop the gems that you so <laughs> you got to see in the other um, episode of him, and that's that's his life. He is funny. He's creative. He uh, um, knows how to read the room, which were all things that they told me he didn't know. Mm -hmm. They told me he didn't know language. He didn't even understand receptive language. He didn't know what people were saying. He couldn't keep a thought in his head. 
long enough to even pick the right PEX card to ask for wants and needs. Um, and then all of a sudden he's cracking jokes and, and you know, showing what a layered personality he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about for you, Zach? What is it like to be, um, first of all, a, a 10 year old, a 12 year old, or no, I guess it was older because it was probably a, a teenager. I was, and, and yeah, then I was 10 Otto, when he was born, yeah. And then, so by the time you found out that Otto um, had some special needs going on, what was that like for you guys? And you have another, another brother too, so. Yeah, represent. so, um, yeah, represent Addie. Um, I'm, you know, a year and a half older than Addie, um, and I remember telling, when my mom told me that we were going to have another another sibling, at my first thought, for some reason, I was like, Mom, how could you do this? Like, how are we supposed to do the Amazing Race as a family if we have five people? It's only four family members. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. And... But the journey that Otto's had with us has been something that, you know, the Amazing Race could never stand up to. <laughs> um, yeah, when Otto was two and a half, three, I was 13, so I was in middle school. Um, and I just remember just a lot of, like, coordination happening. Um, so it was suddenly, like, all four of us going to, all five of us at the time, going to all these baseball tournaments, and we were on travel ball and travel soccer and you know, driving up and down the coast um, to just one parent, you know. Mm. Um, so, you know, it was uh, it was different, but, mm -hmm. you know, we are such a close-knit family that we all banded together. Mm -hmm. um, but I do remember the first time uh, my mom sent a video of auto-typing. It was the second session mm -hmm. with you, and I was 19, 20 at the time. I was living up in L.A., um, and it blew me away. I was walking to class and I just remember seeing the video and just like, it was just so cool. Um, seeing the, like my little brother, you know, he had the voice the whole time, but um, being able to unlock it was um, very cool. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's pretty, so what's it like as a family being in Otto's nation and he's kind of a Pivotal it's a guy, really, huh? it's a fun ride, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to say the least. His self-esteem is incredible. Like I try to learn from him. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm you know ten years older than him, but at seventeen, I'm still like asking. I'm, he's kind of a guru, so I ask him for advice on like you know how do you deal with anxiety, and he's like. Phew. Are you kidding me? Like, come on, bring it on. Um, I'm like, I have, I'm trying to talk to this girl I like. Like, what should I say? And he's like, try this. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. So, um, yeah. The, I mean, the communication we've had since he's uh, learned to type has been, you know, astronomical. Yeah. Um, you know, we f are FaceTiming now to, you know, when I'm up in LA and I'm not coming down to San Diego, we'll FaceTime and, you know, just to say hello. You yeah. know, um, so that's something that you know, pegs can't offer. So, true, true, true. Yeah. And, and why do you wear that jacket? Well, okay, so everybody belongs here. Uh, <laughs> Rainy king of inclusion, Otto Lana. Um, yeah, it just, you know, everyone deserves a chance. Everyone, uh, like it says, everyone belongs here. Everyone should have equal communication opportunities. Everyone should have, um, you know, an equal opportunity for education. And um, everyone should be given a chance. Yeah. yeah. And that's Otto's message. Jared. And that's Otto's message. Yeah. Um, Otto's mottos. Yes. Um, Otto underscore types on Instagram. Um, yeah. 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 Very cool. Now, um, do you, uh, are you able to support Otto to communicate? A you little bit. You haven't been in the home as much. I'm, I'm really only home a couple weekends, um, maybe a weekend a month. Mm -hmm. My other brother Addison his you know one of his other main communication partners yes. so from that perspective uh, being able to go with Otto and Addy anywhere you know mm -hmm. is very very cool um, yeah. we're able to spend days on end with Otto and he'll tell us exactly what he wants exactly how he's feeling we get into like you know some fights in a loving sibling way uh -huh. um, he'll always tell us you know what he wants to eat it's always in and out um, <laughs> you know so yeah. 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 How about, um, how did you get Addy, how did, like, Addy get into the, being the communication partner for you guys? I think just by accident. He graduated from school and got a job um, in San Diego, so he was living at home, so the mm. access was there. Mm. 
and um, he he and Otto, they call themselves the Decade Delay Twins because <laughs> when you look at pictures of them yeah. at that age, they are twins. Their personalities are very similar. <laughs> Um, they, and so it, it, they just connected really quickly and, and it's interesting because, um, Otto has in-depth conversations with Addy and we'll call it a spade a spade and it's stuff that Addy doesn't always want to hear so it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, because that just never would happen with somebody who's non-speaking, would never have the opportunity to have a heartfelt conversation and, um, so while Addy sometimes gets his feelings hurt, it's 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 wonderful mm -hmm. as a mom to see it unfolding, um, because Zach and Addison are so close and and they've always been able to have that relationship. So to see Addy and Otto have that closeness is wonderful, um, because what everybody worries about is uh, when the parents are dead and gone, who's gonna who's gonna um, navigate those waters with him because he'll always need some kind of co-captain and and so it's just nice to know that the typing that he does is transferable other people can help him do it mm -hmm. and as he gets older and more comfortable he is becoming much more independent in wanting to discuss things and grab his own letter board and what have you but um um yeah, so that so it was just accidental that he just happened to be there, and he happened to be living at home. But yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's interesting because Addison has profound dyslexia, so <laughs> um, so when Otto types really fast, he Addie's lost. Addie oh, can't even follow is. the letters. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll have to ask Otto to slow down so he can follow along what um, Otto's typing. So that's quite um, the duo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, so what do you what do you see for uh, you guys as a threesome? You three uh, Lana brothers. What's Honestly, your future? Honestly, the world is our oyster. <laughs> Unstoppable. <laughs> um, I mean, if you think about even you know last week, um, Otto worked on an original score that got presented uh, at a musical and it was premiered in Beverly Hills. Yes. So um, you know, and in when they were releasing it, red carpet, whole thing. Otto was wearing a tux handsome um he uh they announced his name they're like autolana's here tonight like and for me it was so so cool <laughs> it was a room of like 200 people it was insane um so yeah i think moving forward you know the world's our oyster anything's possible um auto wants to get into movies now so mm -hmm. we'll support him in mm -hmm. all of his endeavors yeah yeah how about you shelly Holy smokes. <laughs> I just never imagined that he would enjoy the limelight as much as he does. It's hilarious. Um, and I'll, you know, as long as he wants to do stuff, I'll support whatever he wants to do. Um, he, he, he just enjoys the public speaking part, which I'm just so surprised because that's normally, you know, one of the people's that's another top irony. tens. That's another irony, That's the right? irony of it. Of the you diagnosis know. and the and then script the fact, that that's going to follow, and then here you are doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. It's it's incredible because it's nothing that I ever thought, ever. And um, But he likes it, and any time anyone offers him an opportunity to speak to a, just a, a college classroom or he's you know going to present at a neuroscience conference or at a mm -hmm. disability rights conference mm -hmm. he's he's in it he wants to do it so um yeah I think he has he has quite a career ahead of him and and Zach's right he's he's loving <laughs> he's loving the idea of multimedia and he's like my message is so powerful and there's so much technology now I really would think I want to get into movies so <laughs> so we'll see we'll see I yeah. don't know but yeah, he's got a bright future for sure. Well, thank you both for sharing that uplifting story <laughs> and fun story. It's always fun when you're talking with Otto or about Otto, either way. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate much. it.